Well, Daniela Cala, chief economist at Tres, is joining us for more. First and foremost, Danielle, just a highlight for us, really. What do you make of this announcement from the ECB? We were expecting the 25 basis point cut, but this decrease in expectations of growth, the growth outlook for the Eurozone, what does that indicate at this stage? Hi, Sylvia. Absolutely. I think that the most important uh, uh, elements that we are going to follow in the market is going to be all of these little messages that the ECB is giving about the weakness of the economy. Because when you read between the lines, the ECB is actually thinking that they need to spur growth or at least the growth in lending and that the expectations of economic growth are way too negative, no? Compared particularly with where consensus is in terms of a, of a recovery. So I think that what the ECB is saying on the one hand is that they will continue to pay a lot of attention to inflation because obviously uh, the battle against inflation has not been completely abandoned. There's still a lot of core inflation to take care of. But there are important messages. Wage growth is more subdued. Lending is also quite low, and actually the growth in lending for families is almost inexistent. So that added to the downward revision of expectations of economic growth for 2025 and 2026 signals that it's very likely that the ECB will give all that it can in order to, at the same time, continue to pay attention to inflation and try to control the risks of, uh, of a negative move, particularly in the energy side while at the same time trying to support the economy with a little bit of uh, improvement in credit growth. So let's talk actual numbers. Between now and the end of the year, in which camp are you? Going into this meeting, the debate seemed to be that we're going to see another 50 or, two, or 75 basis points in cuts. Ultimately, with this downward revision in, in the growth prospects, where do you think we'll sit in terms of rates by the end of the year? I'm more prudent. I believe that the ECB is likely to cut rates maybe in December, but you should not expect three rate cuts into the end of the year, according to our analysis, precisely because the economic growth figures that they are looking at, the inflation figures that they're estimating, and the credit growth uh, figures that were presented a month ago, don't signal such a negative environment. What they're looking at is to uh, provide a policy that supports an idea of disinflation that needs to be reaffirmed with actual data. But if they actually implemented three rate cuts into December, I would be very worried because that would signal that the risk of recession is not 30 percent, that the risk of recession is probably 70, 80 percent. No. So precisely because in our estimates, the risk of recession is exceedingly low. I think that it's more likely that the ECB will be more prudent in reducing rates in the into December rather than uh, in, than making way too many rate cuts that also understanding that the inflation battle is not completely over we also need to understand that they could make a very negative policy mistake if they cut rates too fast and then have to increase them in maybe January or February hopefully they will not make that it is always a fine balance, isn't it, when it comes to monetary policy. Um, before we discuss the, the outlook of a potential recession in a year, I just would like to understand your thoughts on uh, this narrowing of the, of, of the gap between uh, some of these rates. I just want to highlight them for our, our viewers because they are changing across the board. So the deposit facility, the main one, has been cut by 25 basis points to 3.5%. The main refin refinancing uh, f operation is now at 3.65%. And the marginal lending facility has moved to 3.9%. I just would like to understand from a technical point of view, what does the narrowing of this spread between the rates actually means for the markets? 
I think that narrowing them and getting them closer together means that the financial conditions in the euro area are actually stabilizing and that the ECB is not trying to get banks to do one thing or the other, that the that things are moving the way that they should, at least from the financial and uh, credit growth and lending opportunities of the euro area. So I think that what we need to pay more attention to is the is is the last one is bring it in, bringing it from 3.9 percent to 3.5 could actually be the signal that the ECB is confident that things are in the right path and that they do not need to sort of avoid excessive level of deposits uh, in the European Central Bank or uh, or certainly worried about a significant decline in lending for investment right. and for and for families. It is a normalization. So I think of... that that's what's important is that those those three uh, rates go back to what would actually be the discount of the reality of inflation in the long term. Right. Just very briefly, I just like I understand really, what is the outlook here for a recession? Because the concern when you think about the outlook for the German economy seems quite significant at this stage. Yeah. No, I think that the risk of recession is significantly higher than the 30% that you see in consensus estimates. Uh, you see it in, uh, in the German economy, which simply cannot just catch a breath, the French economy as well, but also in the so-called growth economies. The southern European economies have been driven by the services sector, by a tremendous amount of fiscal stimulus and the next generation uh, money but also from the increase in government spending in a time in which restrictions on the budget did not exist. All of right. those things are sort of converging to higher levels of risk of a significant slowdown. So yeah. I think that right. from that perspective, I think that the rate cut path makes sense the way that I'd, I, I was looking at it, no, maximum two rate cuts uh, into the end of the year, con including this one. But I, I will have the that... chance to speak in more detail in just a moment, but I'm afraid we have to leave it there for now. But let's get back to our conversation with Danielle Lecal, chief economist at Tresses. Danielle, I would also like to get your thoughts on um, the, the outlook here for what politicians might do in uh, the Eurozone. We had that uh, report from uh, Mario Draghi, the former president of the ECB, recently actually posted that on, on Monday. To what extent are we going to see significant changes here from uh, European officials that could lead to further competitiveness at a time when you're seeing some uh, interest in the banking space to actually see significant mergers? Well, I think that it's, this report is exceedingly important. And I am really, really hoping that politicians all over Europe will pay attention to the report because the diagnosis is absolutely spot on. The lack of competitiveness, excessive regulation, way too high taxes and administrative burdens, and how the uh, programs that are implemented at a European level sort of fade out when they are implemented nationally. So there are very interesting things about this report. I think that the problem is maybe that politicians are paying way too much attention to the message of spending $800 billion or euros sorry, a year in investment. Uh, because I think that it's very, very clear that it has to be well targeted and it has to be focused on areas of high productivity and areas where there's actually uh, private and public uh, collaboration. No, so I think that it's 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 very important this this uh, this report because it highlights the challenges of the euro area and the European Union. And I think that from here, what is probably more challenging is to get commitments from uh, individual countries to accept losing sovereignty in order to agree to wider policies that may support these investments that are so badly needed in order to capture some growth, no? Let's look at uh, the Fed as well, because we can't just think about the ECB on its own. And of course, 
talking about competitiveness can have an impact on the ECB, but I would like to just think about the central bank policy for a moment, because we were just looking at uh, US PPI with our colleagues in the United States. We obviously got also jobless claims at, uh, for, for, for the week. And uh, what I would like to understand here is what is this telling us ultimately about the paths for the ECB and the Fed? The ECB, very clear, 25 basis point cut today. But the Fed, how important is what the Fed does for what the ECB decides in Frankfurt? I think that what the Fed does is very important for the ECB, the Bank of Japan and the Bank of England. The idea that, you're, that the European Central Bank can sort of uh, move away from what the Fed does makes no sense for anybody that works in the financial markets because we all know that the world is dollarized. No, But I think that what all of these figures tell us is that uh, they may suggest the Fed moving to a 25 basis point cut but not to a 50, and very difficult to see the four rate cuts, as I was mentioning before, that uh, the consensus is, ex is expecting. That would be basically telling the, the market that what they are actually fearing is not a soft landing, which is what the jobs figure, the growth figure, and the inflation figures may suggest for the Fed, but that things are much worse, no? So I think that the Fed is going to be more prudent probably than the ECB. Also, because in the last CPI figure, what you can see is that the only real disinflation factor is energy. And if you cut rates way too fast, what happens is that energy prices may go up simply because uh, it's, it's cheaper to finance margin calls, it's cheaper to finance long-term positions in, in commodities. So they need to be aware of that very, very complex th and thin line. I think that they need to give a message of prudence and at the same time, although they will not mention it, but I'm sure that it's in the back of the mind of the Federal Reserve governors, they cannot simply go cutting rates four times in the middle of an election. Yeah, yeah that, there's also that event happening in November as well. Um, I just would like to also get your thoughts on uh, what that prudence from the Fed can mean for FX. As I was highlighting, you know, when I look at the chart over the last, over, over this year for uh, um, Euro dollar, it seems like we haven't really moved. We are still at 1.110. A lot has happened over the last couple of months, but when you think about where we were at the start of the year and where we are now, we're talking about similar levels here. So going, thinking about the next three months, but we now in the end of the year, what, that, what does that prudence from the Fed mean for the currencies? Well, if we, as I expect, see the Fed being prudent and more uh, on the side of one rate cut maximum two, but the ECB continues to cut rates and at the same time be more dovish, I think that it's pretty evident that the uh, very thin uh, line in which the uh, euro dollar has been moving may go back to being a weakness of the euro. Uh, obviously, the ECB is not going to talk about weakness of the euro as a policy because it is not the ECB's policy and it's never been. But ultimately, for exporters in Germany in particular and others, uh, a little bit of uh, closer to 105 is a much better level of exchange rate. So uh, if you look at both the estimates of growth of the euro area of the ECB, which come with a significant downgrade of the trade surplus of the euro area. Uh, and if you look also at the policy of the ECB, it is going to continue to be relatively more dovish and certainly more accommodative in any shape or form than that of the, of the Federal Reserve. There are a lot of uh, market participants talking about a very aggressive Fed that is going to cut 50 basis points four times and even increase uh, uh, purchases or, or a start a QE program in 2025. That is not going to happen until March at least if right. things go really badly. But things are not going really badly in the figures that the Fed looks at. They may be weaker when you look at the granularity, but what they look at doesn't suggest that they need to be as aggressive as some people in the FX market are assuming. Right, Therefore, I would, I would assume that there would be a reversal in that sort of long euro, short dollar right. bet.
and we are going to hear from them next week. So let's see whether they will give us a little bit more clarity, really, about the approach between now and the end of the year. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for your time today. That was Daniel Lecala, Chief Economist at Dresses. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel, like my videos, leave your comments below, and keep defending freedom. Thank you very much.